Don't Tap presents the couch versus the coach. So just giving a, a big congrats to Kyle on a, a great performance. And I know that uh, it's most of the people that were betting against you that had their parlays busted that uh, had issue or took, took um, you know, an issue with the early stoppage and what was considered an early stoppage. But I did your your, re, your reel, right? I did a highlight hype reel. And what I did in the closing sequence was count the, the number of strikes you landed versus the number he did. And I actually think it was 25 to 2. And one of his strikes actually landed clean. The, the other one sort of was glancing. 25 to 2, and he was on skates twice. And although he was calling you on smiling, I mean, fighters know, off, know more often than not, sometimes when you get hit, you smile and sort of like you try to glance it off. And it's, it was, it's a false confidence. Um, talk about the, what they say is an early stoppage, and I think was just fine with me. Of course, sitting on the plus 250 ticket, thank you line. Um, yeah. I'm happy about it. You know, um, again, like it seemed like everything was kind of landing pretty clean. Uh, when I first rocked him, I opened up a little bit, got a little bit wild and was still landing, you know, some shots. He was kind of, you know, bobbing and weaving a bit, but uh, I was still touching him. But I wanted to, to slow down a little bit and get a little bit more technical. And again, as he was kind of circling out, he was egging me forward. I think trying to get me maybe to overcommit on something so he could, he could step back and throw a check hook or something like that. But again, I just I just stepped forward on the on the right cross like kind of two times in a row, and they both landed really clean. And then on the second one, I followed up with a a hook, and then a, and then another punch. And again, all three of those in the last sequence landed super clean. And I think every every one of them kind of made them stumble a bit. And I could definitely see where the the ref was coming from in in stopping the fight there. Now, if he'd let it go, maybe another thirty seconds. Who knows? Maybe I'd have a bonus right now. But uh, I think as far as, you know, in Bill's, you know, best interest and, and safety, I think the ref did do a good job. Yeah, I mean, e even if he skates into the second round, I don't really see him getting out of the second round. Like he was, he was, he wasn't, he, was, he wasn't doing well. He was getting time before he was wobbly, then he was wobbly. I just, that doesn't really bode, like it doesn't come back. There's very few times you ever see that uh, go back the other way. Chris, what did you think of the fight? You saw Kyle fight on the weekend. Um, just give your take on it. First of all, congrats, Monster, man. I haven't seen you yet. The, uh, the fight, what a fight. That was unbelievable, man. You had everyone back home literally on their feet cheering. And uh, as far as the stoppage, like, it's it's so different watching the shit on TV versus being there live. Like, I can, you know, attest to that being, like, you know, a lot of times front row right at cage side. Stuff sometimes doesn't portray quite as clear on the television as it does in real life. And uh, and I thought it showed on the television that this guy was clearly on his way out and the ref did the right thing and stepping in. You know, I'm sure up close the ref probably saw something in his eyes maybe that we didn't see. So I'm very reluctant to ever argue a short stop, uh, a, a, a stoppage that's short because I know a lot of times I've been in there when it's been like kind of dicey and it's like, fuck no. When you're sitting there live, those shots at Kyle's landing, those are real hard first round Kyle Nelson shots and I'm sure the ref felt in there that he was he was doing the right thing by stopping that fight no question well I think there's a case of intelligently defending yourself that's there right like and I just I think that's got to be a criteria and he wasn't intelligently defending himself anymore and I watched it back over and over again because I was editing up the sequence and it was like he just wasn't you know and then the only thing where he looked like the false sense of confidence was when he was doing this calling you on and it just that was a bunch of bullshit so and I'm a big Bill LGO fan so I'm not talking shit about him it's just Great performance by you. Really excited to see you do uh, what you did in there. And once again, so many people had, and I know I go from a betting standpoint, but I just, I sort of love to see people try to consistently fade somebody. And this guy comes in. Oh, by the way, by the way, the bad guy, the Canadian bad guy, you come in and call everybody into the K. Now, was, was that sort of that chip on your shoulder? Did you know that was going to go into the post-fight speech if you talked or did that just come out? It just kind of came out. I mean, in my, my last fight against Padilla, again, I was kind of in enemy territory. And usually I'm able to kind of win the win the crowd over. But again, in the Padilla fight, the crowd still wasn't happy with me. And especially in this fight, the crowd wasn't happy with me. So I was kind of, I'm over trying to, uh, you know, make everybody happy. And and uh, so, yeah, I, I let, uh, let my mind go a little bit there. Man, man, lean into it. Because, I mean, not, not, not Kobe Co Covington lean into it, but lean into it a little bit. It's like, it's fuck him. If you can lean into it, it may get you a, a bigger fight than you actually would have got, you know, depending on timing and where it is, because you you talked on the mic a couple times. So 
I like it. I think it's a, a nice little flair too. And, and everybody else can kick rocks, uneducated, uh, casual fans. So that being said, we will jump into UFC 300. And the whole premise behind Couch versus the Coach was to educate the fan, was to show that, you know, there is some positives to cappers who, you know, dig into tape and are able to dissect fights from one standpoint. But at the end of the day, coaches, fighters, guys that get in there and actually train are going to know the, the fine points when it comes down to the fights. So we're doing a roundtable for UFC 300. And uh, first and foremost, what we're going to do, we're going to bring picks to the table. We have Chris Prickett from Niagara Top Team, uh, head coach. We have Kyle Nelson. We just talked to Kyle Nelson about the KO um, coming out of the House of Ch Champions. And uh, for you, just very, very happy for you. And then we also have Jaden, dissection of violence out of Niagara Top Team as well, too. He's sort of a double-edged sword in this game because he trains fighting, but then also is one of the sharpest cappers out there when it comes to MMA. So um, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and I had to have you for 300 as well, too. Um, so for the three of you, I want you to bring your top picks to the table. And I think I'll let the guy with the KO start off the show. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably just start with the, the main event. I think uh, Alex Pereira, at least with what Jamal, uh, Jamal Hill's been saying as far as, you know, he's, he's going to kind of keep it standing, you know, <laughs> uh, I just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me seeing what we've seen out of Alex Pereira. But I mean, if, if, if Jamal Hill sticks to his word, which I, I think he will, then uh, I think we can see Alex Pereira kind of put him away early. Pereira works with that, that calf kick a bit and stuff early on. So I could see it making it into the second round, especially if, if um, Hill is moving around a little bit and stuff. But I definitely think that we'll see a second round, uh, probably a pretty, pretty, devastating knockout by Alex Pereira in the second round. And best line right now is about minus 140 for Alex Pereira. Jamal Hill is sitting at plus 125. So that would be a one point play for the money line play for Alex Pereira. Uh, Coach Prickett, what do you think of that, uh, that fight? I agree with the monster a hundred percent. That's exactly how I see it going. I, I just long layoffs like that. Sometimes people, uh, you know, are not, are not the norm. And they come back and they look great. But I just think stepping into it with uh, Alex Pereira, especially if he's going to keep it standing, the calf kicks, he just looks so good uh, as of late. And he's just getting better every fight. I think Pereira, I, I see him getting it done inside two rounds. And but I, like exactly. the fight. I hope it's a banger. I hope it's a good fight. Um, it's definitely, uh, you know, a lot of people have given a shit for being the headliner, which is crazy. I think it's an awesome headliner fight. So, But I'm going to go Pereira, second round knockout. Section. Well, honestly, with this fight, it's it's all how uh, Hill recovers from that Achilles injury. Um, it's it's a it's a big question mark for me because when he's on, he's on, and I think Alex is very hittable. And I feel like you know if 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 lesser opponents have been able to hit him and you know do do good, relatively good, I feel like Jamal Hill can find success, but. The thing with this fight is the calf kicks of Pereira are going to be there. The check hook when uh, Jamal overextends. There's just a few few things with this fight that it's like a mystery. So it's like I don't really know. I can't really say to a uh, side with confidence. But what I can say is I expect a finish uh, by KO. Obviously, I, I can't I can't imagine either of them getting a submission um, on each other. Because they're both pretty sound defensively. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go with with Alex, but it, but it's a back and forth thing with me right now with this fight. So I can't say it in concrete. I've been back and forth with this fight all week. But good that we got a take for, from all of you for the main event. Um, and what we'll do is we'll let Chris bring his first spot to the table. My top spot. I'm going to go with, uh, Holloway over Gaethje. Unpopular opinion. I think he's going to, uh, I don't know. I just think he, he's risen to the challenge before. Maybe this is just a bit of my uh, wishful thinking, but I'm going to go with Holloway over Gaethje. I'm going to call it like a five round. I'm going to call it a decision. Is that crazy? I mean, what sort of odds do you get on betting on that? So you think maybe Holloway sort of bites down on the mouthpiece maybe at times, but then also out volumes Gaethje um, and goes yeah. to a, a solid decision? Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. What would that pay me out on? 
if I were to bet that's on That's uh, plus 196 best line, but it's really – actually, that's one of the better lines. It's sitting roughly around like what, plus 175 to plus 190 right now in the market. Um, so that would be a two-point play for you. Almost a three-point play. Any thoughts on that fight? Anybody have a take on that one? I think I, – I've been going with Gaethje for this one. I think when we saw Max Holloway, Holloway go up to 155 before against Dustin Poirier, I don't think he did well with the power of the shots. Usually um, Holloway can can you know eat a shot or two and then really put his volume together to start picking guys apart. And I just think Gaethje's power is going to kind of stop in his tracks. I don't think we'll see a finish. So the big thing will be is like getting later on in the fight if, if Gaethje starts to gas. But again, I think he's got enough power to kind of shut down uh, Holloway's offense. So I think we'll see. And I don't think we're going to ever see Holloway, you know, get KO'd. Um, maybe like a doctor stoppage or something from like a bad cut or something like that. Or I think we'll see Gaethje win by decision. Okay, so the, both guys, um, you know, both pros on either side of it. But if we look at it, um, both agree that it's going to probably go to the over. Um, so definitely look at that one to like go to the decision and or look at the over for that one. So, okay. And, and Kyle, was that actually maybe one of your plays or was that just your uh, take on that? that yeah, no, I definitely, points? yeah, I definitely add, uh, add yeah, the Gaethje, Gaethje by decision in there for sure. So Gaethje by decision, that would be a two-point play. The, the prop isn't out yet, but it's like going to sit in plus money territory to give us um, a two-point play. So we'll do Gaethje by decision. Dissection, bring your first spot to the table, brother. I'm going to have to keep it simple. This is probably my most confident pick on the card. And honestly, I'm not I'm not too thrilled with this card as far as squares. And squares being, like, you know, free picks. There's a lot of, like, you know, gimme matchups. This, this card, there's very few other than maybe Bo Nickel. And even then, the odds are crazy. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Davison Figueredo here. I think Figueredo is just he's, – he's, he's such a talented fighter, well-rounded. Uh, I don't see him, you know, causing – uh, Cody any grappling problems. Cody's a phenomenal wrestler. I just think he's going to be a lot to deal with on the feet. And Cody, unless he pulls like a very throwback performance, I don't think he's going to be able to hang with him on the feet too much. Um, I could be wrong. Cody maybe, you know, shuts him up and like gets a finish maybe even, uh, or even maybe a decision. But with Figueredo, I just think he's too talented. And I think the guy has faced and beat really good guys. Cody has too, but One's going, I feel like, still up in his career, and Cody is in a weird spot right now in his career. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with Figueredo here. I think this is a pretty safe pick. Uh, we'll see, though. And now I'm just looking for the line. Um, what would be your take on that one? So Figueredo right now, he's sitting at – he's pretty much a parlay piece at minus, like, one – I think about about minus 250, the lowest, um, but he's sitting around minus 300. So with that, does anybody have a take right now if you look at Cody, Steve, and Figueredo? That's a safe bet. To be honest, I agree with everything that uh, Jaden just said there. I completely agree. I think that's a safe bet. I don't know if there's any safe bets, but I would definitely include that in uh, in one if I was going to – I had to go one pair. Of and is it just the, the biggest thing, the power, you think is going to be the difference there for all of you? Like you think it's going to be Figueredo's going to be able to sort of power back um, Garbrandt? Just the shot selection. I feel like he's going to be he's, his slip and rips, his his timing, um, his movement. He's just, he's going to he, like Cody's very good, and he could have a nice throwback performance. But you know he was getting calf kicked by Kelleher, and I just feel like I'm not saying that like, Kelleher is you know nothing, but I'm just saying is Cody is very hittable. He is very there to be hit, and I just I got to go with Figueroa here. He's just too dangerous on the feet. Okay, um, Kyle, you you've now put your next or your second spot already out there, so we're gonna go all the way back down to Chris. Chris, what is your second spot that you want to bring to the table? Okay, my second spot, I'm gonna go with Armin Sarukian over Oliveira by decision. Just uh, the up and comer. I, I don't know what again. I don't know what the lines are at, but I think um, I think he's the future. He looked so solid leading up to uh, to now, and and just going back to what his only loss is. To, uh, Makachev in his in his debut, right? Man, he, he's solid as they come. That's my pick. I'm gonna go with Armin. They're gonna both have their moments on the feet, but I just think the wrestling and his ability to uh, 
you know, negate the, the submission attempts off his back. I mean, Oliveira has had huge success off his back and uh, with his grappling. I just think with uh, with Armin's wrestling, I think he's going to be able to negate that and kind of slow him down a little bit on the ground. And um, kind of, honestly, I think he's just going to win a decision. Maybe it, maybe it's not even an exciting fight, but I think he's going to do. He knows the magnitude of this fight. <laughs> likely a title shot for him next or in the works i think he's gonna just do what he needs to do to get the fight and get the win okay anybody have thoughts on that one um like i'm with that one i'm going with my heart you know um we haven't seen Oliveira lose to really anyone except uh, Islam in, in a long time now. So uh, he gets dropped and stuff like that, and he, he, he takes some shots, but he always seems to kind of rally back now. So, I mean, for that reason, and it's probably more so just going with my heart because I like Oliver. I'm, I'm going to pick him. Uh, I think for me, odds-wise, I'd say it's a toss-up, but I'm going to go with my heart and pick Oliveira. Uh, probably, again, by, by a decision. I think it'll be a war and a uh, close fight. But yeah, I'm going to pick uh, Oliveira by decision. Good. I'm glad yeah, I, going with their heart. I just was thinking, I'm like, man, you can't go with your heart when you're betting. It's all about <laughs> you. you Got to go with your guts. Well, if you look at it right now, you can get Oliveira for plus 190. So plus 190 can be had for uh, Charles Oliveira. Uh, I'm going to have to throw this down to the prelims again. Um, I feel like a, lo a lot of the time that's what the UFC likes to do. Uh, other than the, you know, the Vegas cards. There's a, there's a lot of good spots in the earlier part, part of the shows. Uh, Betting-wise, I feel like they like to put a lot of more of the competitive matchups to the main event, main card. And uh, with this one, I'm going to have to go with Jalen Turner. Um, I just feel like he's uh, a bit bit more more skilled. I wouldn't say fully because the grappling is Moicano's thing, especially once he gets him down. I feel like if Dan Hooker can get him in that rear naked choke, although he was exhausted, uh, I feel like Moicano can as well. Uh, the thing about this fight that really intrigues me is just how mean Turner is on the feet. And Moicano has been shown to be KO'd, uh, being, you know, TKO'd before. So I do see a path to being TKO'd, but I also see Turner proving the naysayers wrong that he could put a solid 15 minutes together. So I'm just going to have to go with Turner Moneyline here. I feel like that's uh, the more safe pick. That's, that'll be my second pick. I just feel like Turner... He's just, you know, he's just so talented. He, the only time he loses fights is when he, like, he loses his focus. He just starts letting his opponent into the fight. Like, he, he rarely, like, he rarely gets outskilled. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I just don't think Moicano is going to be able to, you know, take him to the ground because he has good wrestling, but I don't think it's the wrestling is going to be Gamrot level, something that he just faced. So, I'm going to go with Dale, Jalen Turner here. What would be your third pick you'd bring to the table for UFC 300? So, let's go with the prelims. I'm going to go Aljo over uh, Kelvin Cater. I just think, um, first of all, I think the the question of him being whether he's uh, big enough for 45 and all that, I think he's, I think he's going to probably be very similar in size to Cater. He's a he's a monster at 35, and and I think this could even be a, I don't know about a better weight class for him, but just with Cater's style, obviously the 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 range striking of O'Malley was was difficult for him to get in close and get and and get some good shots off. But with Cater, he's more of like an upright boxing style. I don't, I don't think he's going to be there to get hit with his big uh, combinations. So I'm going to go with Aljo on this one. I I'm going to say he's going to end up taking it taking his back at some point and getting a submission. Maybe I'll call for a third round submission for Aljo. Okay, so for your official pick, though, what would you like to pick? Would you like to go with just an Aljo submission, which would probably be a two-point play, or do you want to go with what, what's Aljo it for money line would be a one-point play? Um, I mean, I already got – yeah, I'll just go for the money line. I'll just take Aljo by any win. Yeah. Good value with the money line. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that over the submission, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. Just in case he backpacks him to a decision and you're like – exactly. In... exactly. Again, I – Someone like that, I think he's going to be really, you know, he's going to want to get in the wing column, and uh, and uh, he, he may end up playing it safe and just ride him out on the back. So, yeah, that's a good call. Probably just go, you know, money line. And now, gentlemen, what I'd like you to do on the out would just be to build a quick parlay. What, what do you think would be the number one, you know, three-banger parlay that we could do? 
let's lead off a dissection of violence. You start the parlay off. So, am I able to give the two guys I already given, or do you want me to give someone else? No, you can. You can give whatever you want. Like you don't I'm even have to give justification for it. Just give a pick. Definitely gonna give Turner then as my uh, as my parlay piece. Okay, and Kyle. Uh, my first one, which I don't like, might even be my lock. I might pick Diego Lopez against uh, Sadiq Youssef. I think he's going to win by dis. I mean, by uh, by submission for sure. I would I would think it's early on, so I'll say first round. Okay, Diego Lopez, it is for Kyle Nelson. I mean, you can really do whatever the hell you want. You're the Canadian bad guy, so you can <laughs> tell me to fuck off and do whatever I got to do. So, Chris, what what do you got for your pick? All right, I'm gonna go away, Lee. I like it. Can't bet again. Nobody talked about her today. Yeah, these guys are sexist pieces of shit, man. They don't even <laughs> women. I end up like that's a lot of my picks in my plays, but uh, women's MMA decisions have been sort of on the side of Blanchfield last week. Sort of hurt. <laughs> it sort yeah. of hurt. That it was hurt a lot. That was hard for everyone to watch. Yeah, and I mean, you you feel for a fighter because she's in there and she just can't figure it out. She's sort of stuck there, and she, I, there was no direction. I don't think. I mean, at least who knows? I, I don't, it didn't seem like there was any direction. There was no direction taken or whatever it was because there was no adjustment made in the fight. Um, she almost got a head kick in the fifth round. The coach called for a Leon. They said Leon, Leon, and she hit the head kick, but it just didn't KO her. So, what about you? Got that. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, like I said, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I will chop this up. I know I caught you midday, so it was, you know, I caught you guys at the gym and everything else, and I will make it uh, all work and come together beautifully. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Kyle, great job with the KO, as always. Wow. Chris, it, it's absolute pleasure. Thanks, guys. And Jane, I appreciate you always being on the show, brother. No worries, brother. Anytime.